All right, so here we have one example of a falling object uh, quadratic modeling problem. And this, again, is a classic kind of quadratic modeling type problem because gravity uh, is modeled with a quadratic. So we're also going to need our graphing calculator for this. We can do this without the graphing calculator, um, but I want to show you some techniques on the graphing calculator. Now, as similar to some other examples, I'm going to have you work on a lot of this on your own uh, because this is stuff we've done before. There's just context to what we're doing. So an object is launched straight up at 48 feet per second. The height in feet of the object is given by h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 48 t plus 8, where t is the time in seconds since the object was launched. First, I want to say, okay, I call this a falling object problem. It is still a falling object problem. Even though we're launching it, it still is falling back down. So at some point, it's coming back down because it's a parabola. Um, all right, a couple other things. So we want to keep in mind our units and what our variables represent. So height is this. That is our y value, so to say, air quotes there again. Uh, and then time, t, is our x-coordinate or x-value. Okay, so at what height was the object launched? So I want you to try to do this on your own. My hint to you, though, think about if you start a race, how much time is on the clock right before you start? That's the same as how much time is on the clock right before we launch. And if we know how much time is on the clock, then we can figure out the height at which we're at. So pause the video, find the height that the object was launched at. Unpause when you're ready to check just that. Okay, so going back to my race analogy, when we start the race, there are zero seconds on the clock, right? And then once we start, now the clock starts going. Same with when we launch the object. So if I plug in zero, I can find the height at which the object is when time is zero. Another way to say that is this is the y-intercept that we're looking for. And we know since this is a, b, c form, the c value is the y-intercept. So it's eight feet high when the object is launched. Next part, again, you should be able to do this. When does the, max, when does the object reach the maximum height? What do we call the maximum height of a parabola? We call it the vertex, right? That's the point, right? The maximum value is the y-coordinate of that point, but the point itself is the vertex. When does the object reach the maximum height is asking us for time. Which coordinate does time represent? Time represents the x-coordinate. How do we find the x-coordinate of a vertex when we have a, b, c form? Remember, that's also called h. Pause the video. Find that. Unpause when you're ready to check. Okay, so I know the h value of the vertex is opposite of b over 2a. And in this case, that's negative 48 over 2 times negative 16. If I type that into my calculator, that's 1.5 seconds. So the object will reach its maximum height at 1.5 seconds. Part C, what is the maximum height? So if we know the h coordinate of the vertex, how do we find the k coordinate of the vertex? Pause the video. Unpause when you're ready to discuss. Okay, so here, to find the k-coordinate, we plug the h-coordinate into the function. So k equals negative 16 times 1.5 squared plus 48 times 1.5 plus 8. k is 44 feet. So that is the maximum height of the object. Now, we're actually going to use a lot of this information to help us with the next part of the problem. So how long is the object at or above 28 feet? This is where we're going to need our calculator. So go ahead and get your calculator out. Here's my calculator. And we're going to put the function into y1. Uh, so, here, sorry, let me back out of that for a second. Uh, we go to, we look at the calculator, I go to y1, or y equals, and then in y1 I'm going to type in negative 16. And normally the equation said t squared, but we're just going to use x because that's what the calculator has. So we're going to say x squared, and then plus 48x plus 8. Now we also wanted to know how long the object was above 28 feet, so I'm going to plug in 28 to y2. I'll explain that in a second. So for right now, just type in 28 there. And if we have our standard window going, if I hit graph, this is what I see. That's not terribly helpful. So I need to adjust my window so I can see the picture. How do I know how to adjust my window? Well, let's go to our window. And remember that the x values represent time. 
So I don't care about negative time. So I'm going to change my x minimum to 0. My x maximum, well, if I know that, remember, the maximum height occurred at 1.5 seconds, I know that this isn't in the air for very long. So I'm going to change the x maximum to 5. The x scale, that doesn't matter. Let's just leave that. Y minimum represents height. So again, I don't care about negative heights. So I'm going to change that to 0. Y maximum, well, I know the maximum height was 44 feet. So let's set this at 50, just so that we have a little bit of room to see the picture. Now I'm going to hit graph. So now we can see this. And we can see this line is the Y equals 28. The question wanted to know how long is the object at or above 28 feet. So I need to find where did the, where does, how much time happened here, right? In order to do that, I want to find where these intersect. So this is where I'm going to use the calculator. And again, we could do this without the calculator by solving uh, the quadratic equation. But I want to show you how the calculator can be useful for something like this. This is great for a standardized test or something. So if I hit second trace, notice that above that it said calc. That means calculate. Notice that the fifth choice down is intersect. We're trying to find an intersection. So I'm going to go down to 5, or I could just type the number 5, just so you know. So I hit enter. Now the calculator is going to ask me a couple of questions. It's going to ask me for a first curve, a second curve, and a guess. All that means for the first curve, it refer and by the way, it refers to all graphs as curves. So that's what it's talking about. So the, for the first curve, I needed to tell the calculator which equation to be on. Right now, I can see it is on y1. That's good. So I'm just going to hit enter. For the second curve, I need it to be on the other equation I want to intersect with. So there's only two equations here. Notice how the calculator jumped to the other equation, which is what I want. So that's good. So I'm going to hit enter for that. Now it wants a guess. Really, all this is is I just need to get the cursor somewhere near, and not even really close, but just relatively near the intersection that I want to find. Since the cursor is already really close to this intersection, I'm just going to have it find that intersection first. So I'm not going to even move it any closer. I'm just going to hit Enter. So it told me the intersection was at 2.5 comma 28. So I don't care about the 28 because I knew that's where the height was going to be. For right now, I'm just going to mark down the time t equals 2.5 seconds. And so think about what that means. This point is where the object was above and then now became below 28 feet. So now we need to find this intersection. So I'm going to go through that same process again. I'm going to hit second trace. Here I'm going to just hit number 5 because that's a shortcut. Now I'm going to move the cursor so it's closer to the intersection that I'm looking for. Okay, and again, I don't need to get terribly close. So it's asking me for the first curve. It's on the parabola equation, so that's good. I hit enter. It jumps down to the line, which is the second curve. That's good. I hit enter. The guess doesn't matter because I'm closer to this intersection now than I was to this one. So I can just hit enter again. Uh, and just to point out, if we didn't, we, we would go closer if we needed to. So I hit enter. And I can see that this is at 0.5 comma 28. So I also know then that I have an intersection here, right? And so again, the question is asking how long is the object at or above 28 feet? So if we know this is 0.5 seconds, and this is 2.5 seconds, how long was it at or above 28 feet? It'd be 2 seconds. Because I know that 2.5 minus 0 0.5 is 2 seconds. That's it. Again, I want to point out, we could have done this without the calculator. Uh, if we set this equal to 28, and then we solved for t, uh, we could have factored or used the quadratic formula. 
those are all valid methods, uh, but I wanted to show the calculator.